Like, man, you know what? I already got the CDL. I'm about to dip. <laughs> I'm about to dip. I find some local work at home. And I mean, I just go around all this shit. The only aspect I want to say I hate, I hate, I hate about TNT is. God, your father, man. All right, y'all. So this is gonna be a quick video. Um, today is Sunday. Um, so this marks my first week of going over the road with a trainer for a TNT. So the purpose of this video is just to do a full summary of my one week wrap up. Um, just basically from the first time I got in the truck, my first impressions of my trainer, uh, my first impressions of being over the road, um, getting used to the truck stop. So everything is for the first time. So um, for y'all just going in, about to go into TNT, or even if y'all just about to start prime, um, this is going to be a real in-depth video about just what it feels like or the emotions and how you going to feel. I mean, your first week out here, because it's definitely, I want to call it like a culture shock. So um, right off the bat, when you leaving to come to TNT, and you know what? I can't even say everybody gonna feel like this because um, this is just me. But um, like I said, this is just an idea how you might feel. So I can't really tell you. But for me, um, when you first waking up that morning to go to TNT, um, I was ready. Not gonna hold you. Even though I was a little sour because I had to, um, I had to, well, actually, no, I wasn't sour because I got the, you mean spend Thanksgiving. And that was the one thing I was a little sour about. I thought I was gonna have to miss Thanksgiving. But um, luckily I didn't have to miss Thanksgiving. So um, I was able to see the family and everything. So by the time that Friday came, I was ready to go. And then it got pushed back to a Saturday, I was ready to go. And then on Saturday, it got pushed back again. So by that time, it kept getting uh, pushed back. I was definitely ready to go. So when I finally got that call to meet him Sunday night or Saturday morning, wherever, um, I was ready to go. Um, so that whole ride up there took me an hour, two hours. We're gonna say two hours, stopping the gas and everything. Um, that whole ride up there, I was, you know, banging my Nipsey hustle, that victory lap, trying to get my mind set because um, I knew I was gonna be gone for a good six weeks at the least, possibly two months. So I was just trying to get my mind ready. Um, so when I pulled up to the Piston campus, um, my trainer, he was getting his truck fixed. So I thought I was just going to meet him, hop right in the truck, and we was ready to roll. But it wasn't like that. It probably may go like that for you. It may not go like that for you. I'm not sure. But um, I thought we were going to be ready to roll. We had to sit around and get his truck fixed. So, you know, that was cool. First impression of my trainer is he did not talk much <laughs> at first. Um, so I knew, just talking to him over the phone, I knew that he was uh, Haitian or some type of African or, you know, just from his accent. So I already knew that. Um, and I use, I'm used to dealing with them, obviously. Uh, I'm African-American. I'm not Haitian or, you know, from Ghana or anything. I'm from America, but I've dealt with Africans and people from Senegal, Ghana, a lot of them, you know, from different races. So that wasn't a problem. But um, so I get in the truck. I finally find him because he was in Piston. He was on Bay 15 getting his truck fixed. So I had to walk around a little bit trying to find him. So I finally find the truck. I walk up to him. I'm like, yo, what's up? My name's Joe. I get in the truck. He was like, what's up? And then it's just quiet. <laughs> it's just quiet as shit. He on the phone. So we pretty much just stay quiet for I'm for good, bro. The whole time we was in the truck, it got to the point now we probably sat there for like 15 minutes. He was on the phone. I'm like, yo, I'm about to just go back to my car. I'm about to just call me when you <laughs> when you ready. And I didn't want to sit in there. And it was just opera. It was opera for me. He probably wasn't thinking of another, you mean, he do this all the time, he always got students, so it probably wasn't weird for him. But for me, I'm like, man, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna just sit in the car until you're ready to talk. So um, that's pretty much what it was. That was the first impression. He was a little standoffish. Um, but you know, it's cool. I'm here for a reason. I ain't really here to make friends anyway. So we finally get on the road and um, we start heading to uh, I can't remember the first stop. I know we had to go through Ohio. Um, I think we're going to Chicago. If I'm not mistaken, we're going to Chicago. Yeah, we're going to Illinois. So we were going from PA to Illinois. So I drove all through PA. Now that was my first time driving um, 
a fully loaded trailer. <laughs> first time, first time for that long. So if you come to Tanker, just know that experience of driving that Tanker for the first time, that full Tanker, um, it's a little humbling. It's a little humbling. It's definitely gonna let you know that this is why you're here training for TNT for this amount of time because you're not about to just hop in one of these tankers that's hauling like 20,000 pounds of, you mean, oil and think you about to just close down the highway like everything's sweet. No, that thing got surges. Um, you gotta take your curves a little carefully because that drone will flip over. And then the first thing my trainer told me before I pulled up, pulled off the lot is, yo, you got kids? Um, I'm like, yeah. He like, yeah, I got kids, I got kids too. Make sure you do everything safely. That's the number one thing, safety, because we both trying to make a home to our family. And he was dead serious when he looked at me and told me that. And right there, that's when I knew, I'm like, all right, yeah, let me just, you mean, slow my roll, not act like a know-it-all. Um, are they getting ready to open their business? Let me not act like a know-it-all and just really pay attention to this, uh, to this knowledge that he trying to give me. Because you will kill somebody in one of these trucks. I'm gonna tell you, you will kill somebody in one of these trucks. Um, so like I said, just slow down, take your curves, take your curves slowly, cause you will flip that joint if you're trying to go around a curb too fast. Um, 60 miles an hour, you're going around a curb with liquid swishing around. Yeah, you might flip that joint. Um, everybody trying to make a home to their family. The goal is to make money while you out here. So, um, I mean, just play it smart. Uh, but other than that, once you get used to it, um, it gets better. Now me, I have, uh, a little bit of trucking, you know, a little bit of a trucking background, driving box trucks. Uh, I was drove, I drove box trucks for five years, five, six, seven years. So um, that aspect of just staying in my lane, you know, using my mirrors, um, following distance, stuff like that, making my turns wide, that um, that comes natural, you know. So um, that's a plus for me, I guess. But everything else is nothing like driving a box truck. You mean even when you are turning. I mean, a box truck is not that long. A fucking, excuse my language, but a trailer, a tractor and a trailer, you trying to turn in the city, you're gonna have to make a, you're gonna have to make an extra wide turn. And then sometimes even with your wide turn, you might not be able to make it. But your trainer will be able to explain more to that. Um, so another thing you have to get used to is sleeping in that truck and being on somebody else's time. Um, I'm still getting used to that. I'm still getting used to that. And it's not easy because um, just for one example, I would sleep basically that whole day, half a day, preparing myself for that uh, 11 hours of drive time that I thought I was gonna have to do. Um, if you're not used to driving 11 hours or easy, at least seven hours straight uh, off the rip, you will get tired. And then you have to pull over and then that's just, you know, I'm slowing up the process. So you wanna definitely try to make sure you get sleep. But if you've seen in my video, the first time I drove, I drove for like six hours and I noticed, okay, this is no joke. I wanna get my rest. So next time I'm up to drive, I'm alert. I'm not sleepy, none of that. I sleep a good 10, 11, 12 hours just to wake up thinking I'm about to drive. And he told my son, no, we're gonna pull over. We're gonna park it for the night. So I just slept 10, 12 hours wide awake. I'm just waking up, ready to drive. And you pulling over talking about we about to park it. You about to go to sleep. So you tired, you tired, you can go to sleep. I'm wide awake, it's cold as shit in uh, uh, Illinois, mind you. So it's not like um, I could just get out the truck, walk around, find something to do. I'm stuck in this truck all night, bro. So that was like, that was like probably one of the most annoying experiences I had since I've been out here. I hate just being up and having to just be stuck in a truck. It's like almost like I don't want to compare it to jail, but you gonna see when you get here, bro. It's just crazy. I don't like, I don't like that feeling at all. I mean, like I said, I could have, I walked around, I think one time I got out and walked uh, around in a service station, but I mean, that kind of worked out. Walked around there, stayed in there just so I could stretch my legs. I had to be cooped up in the back of that truck. But uh, that's like probably still to this day, that's the hardest part of TNT for me. Um, I like the driving, obviously I like the driving. I like learning the um, unloading process. I like the loading process, learning how to couple trailers, uncouple trailers. Um, when I'm moving, whenever I'm moving, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I understand, yeah, of course you can't run all day every day, so you won't have to park it. But just the fact that I'm moving and I'm working, I like that aspect. The only aspect I want to say I hate, I hate, I hate about TNT is when you think you about to get here and drive and your trainer want to pull over. Because when you get out here, you want his time. So if you like me, grown man, you used to writing your own ticket, you mean having things go your way, you like being on your own time. 
And, you know, it's just humbling. Like I said, we're going to use that word again. It's humbling when you got to be on another man's time for that time, um, for the time that you are here. You definitely going to have to be on somebody else's time. Um, and, yeah, you had to deal with it, bro. That's just what it is. I mean, that's how training goes. So, um, yeah, that's something you had to get used to, being on somebody else's time, pulling over when you mean he ready to pull over, uh, going to the places that he want to go over. Like, you want to, you might want to park in the fucking Walmart where it got an Applebee's, plenty of space. Like, it got everything in that lot. But if your trainer, he want to park in a truck stop, then, I mean, you parking in a truck stop in the middle of nowhere. And all you, all the only thing you got to eat is chips, donuts, and, you know, just on his time. So, just keep that in mind. But, um... Other than that, homesickness, I only been out here a week, so I can't say I'm really homesick. Um, like I said, FaceTime goes a long way. Phone calls go a long way. Um, and it's only been a week, so yeah, I'm definitely not homesick. Um, I'm just at the point now, Sunday, one week in. I'm not saying I'm completely ready. Well, shoot, I'm ready to get my own truck, just to have my own privacy, run the show my own way. But in reality, I know that um, I'm not capable of doing this by myself just yet because I'm only out here a week. Uh, although I did learn a lot while I'm out here, like just um, coupling and uncoupling the trailer. My first day, I'm like, Ew, I will never figure out how to do this. I figured it out. Connecting the hoses, um, dropping trailers, um, your 01, your 90s, um, just certain things you got to put into your, uh, what is it, the computer, Qualcomm, when you dropping or picking up the trailers or when you're expecting the trailers, I mean, stuff like that, that you need to know. So you ain't sitting here calling dispatch every five minutes. How I do this, how I do that. I'm grasping it. And I learned all, um, I learned all that in one week, how to maneuver the truck. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna say I mastered it, but I've grasped on how to, I gotta, I gotta grasp on how to do all that, right? Um, but it's still other aspects like unloading the trailer. Um, I'm gonna need some work on that. Um, when I pull up to a shipper to get loaded, I need to learn how to work on that. So, um, although I am anxious on getting my own truck, being on my own time, being on my own schedule, and I think I will enjoy it more, um, I'm not ready. So, you mean? We're going to keep rolling down the road, um, getting through this training. Stay strong. Um, I'm going to tell y'all, definitely keep y'all mental strong because it do get rough out here. Like anything you do, um, everything ain't going to be all peaches and cream. So, one day, you're loving it. You're happy. you out here. You're going to feel good, sunshine, and while you're rolling down the road, Next thing you know, your trainer might piss you off. You in Illinois where it's like 19 degrees and you second guessing yourself like, man, why, the, why did I come out here? Why did I come out here? I'm about to just quit. Cause I'd be lying if I said I didn't have those thoughts. Like, man, you know what? I already got the CDL. I'm about to dip. <laughs> I'm about to dip. I find some local work at home. And you mean, I just go around all this shit. And you could do that. I'm not gonna hold you. You could do that. I mean, find some local work. Um, save up some bread, pay that 45 bands off, well, 4,500, not bands, but 4,500 off, and go your own route. But just keep in mind, why you training? You training to learn how to drive this truck. So I can't imagine me trying to get a job at like Coca-Cola, uh, you know, one of them starter companies, Coca-Cola or Cisco or US Foods, and I got to back into a dock, bro, I can't back. <laughs> Backing on the pad and back in the real world, like the real world, it's two different things, bro, I'm telling you, it's two different things. It's two different things. Just driving in the city alone, it's two different things. It's two different things. So remember why you're here. Remember why you're here for this training, bro. It's not just so you can hurry up and get your own truck and be on your own time, even though that's what I'm waiting for. Don't get it twisted. That's exactly what I'm waiting for. But it's really to learn how to drive a truck, bro. You never learned, You never drove a truck this size a day in your life. I know I haven't, so I'm going to speak for me. I never drove a truck this size with this big of a trailer, this heavy in my life. And there's stuff you got to know if you want to be safe or if you want to keep your license in general, because trust and believe, they don't care if you just got your license last week, bro. If you hit something or you do something you ain't supposed to be doing with that license, go over a bridge or you weren't paying attention to a sign, bro, that's going on your license. <laughs> and now you definitely starting on an uphill battle. So just take your time, um, listen to your trainer, go slow, take it easy, and you'll get through it. I'm telling y'all that for you all sake, but I'm also telling y'all, I'm also saying this, so when I listen back, I have something to listen to for motivation for myself. Cause I'm telling y'all, this stuff gets hard, bro. It gets hard. Um, but other than that, I'll say rest stops. That's another thing you gotta get used to. Bro, it's some nasty people in the world. Like me, I'm a cleanly person. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, maybe cause, you know, mom, dad, a sister. Um, there's two females in the house, right? So, I mean, they always are clean. Then, I don't know, I'm just a clean, I'm just a clean person. I'm just a clean person. Uh, 
And then when you come out here, you realize that everybody is not as clean as you are, um, unfortunately. Um, and just past the cleanliness, you just gotta understand that you're not in your personal home, so you might go in the bathroom. You mean, handle your business, I'ma say, I ain't gonna be too explicit, but handle your business, you sit on the toilet, handle your business, and you cool, it's quiet. Now you come out here, you sit down on the toilet, to handle your business, but you got a dude that come in to the left stall and to the right stall, and they both in that joint getting busy, lighting it up, and you hear everything. It's like, mmm, gotta get used to it. When you go out and you ready to brush your teeth, so you gotta brush your teeth at the public sink, and you realize somebody just hawk spit in this one, left it there, hawk spit in that one, it's crazy. All right, so as y'all can tell, the scenery looks a little different. My phone died, so, you know, I just decided we're not even going to play. I'm going to just wait, charge my phone. Um, so the spill is, uh, I was talking to you. I was in what I think it was Alabama, Mississippi or something. Um, and we had just got a load. And the load would take two days. It was Saturday when I was talking to you. And the load couldn't be delivered until Sunday at 6. So long story short, today is Sunday. Um, no, I'm lying. Today is Monday. The load couldn't be delivered until Monday at 6. So lo and behold, today is Monday. Um, it's not 6 o'clock yet. But um, this all ties into what I was saying about some of the things you're going to have to just endure while you're out here. And a big part of that, I'm gonna let this truck move by. A big part of that, guys, I'm telling you, is waiting, 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 waiting. I'm not a good waiter. I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm not talking about restaurants. <laughs> I'm not a good, I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm not patient, because I'm a definitely a patient person, but this is like next level. So I'm gonna just explain it to you. Um, We got a load that came through Friday. Um. After we dropped our last load, we were at the tank wash. And the load says it can't be delivered until Monday. So I'm looking at my trainer. I'm like, bro, are you really going to take this? Because I mean, you mean we're going to have to sit here for like two, three days, two and a half days. And I did make a, a prior video to this, but I never posted it. But now I got time. So y'all going to hear my rant. So I'm asking my trainer. I'm like, are you really going to take this load, bro? Like, we're going to have to be sitting around for two, two days, two and a half days. Now, one thing I will say... I feel like it's gonna be a whole different experience. I'm in like a busy area too, so if y'all keep hearing these trucks go back and forth, um, I'm at a load, I'm at a uh, drop zone, so yeah, that's what that is. And I got a car coming to the right. I'm about to get hit. But yeah, what I'm saying is, it's one thing to, it's one thing to be sitting in a truck for two days and you by yourself, you in your personal space, you know, the truck is, catering to your likes and needs um because it's your truck so i don't know if you got a tv in there you might put an xbox um you might have some cooking stuff you could cook or you know it's just comfortable it's made for you it's different when there's two grown men in a truck and the truck is not mine so i'm pretty much just living in his space i'm just sitting there for two days it's like it drives me crazy i can't stand just sitting in one spot for two days on top of that tanker we go to some crazy places that's like super deserted so it's not like city so I'm like, all right, let me see if I can catch a movie or something. The closest movie is 20 miles away. I'm like, all right, well, you know what? I got some issues. Let me see if I can go to the bank, clear these issues up. Cause I'm having trouble with my card. The closest bank of mine, 84 miles away. It's just crazy to me. So long story short, we, uh, we got the load that's going to take two days. We slow walked it. Um, so from Tennessee, we went up to Alabama. Um, so we spent the night in Alabama and, um, you know, that's where the previous video before my phone died. That's where I made that video. Now the pickup wasn't until Sunday at one. So that was Saturday. We woke up in Tennessee Saturday morning and, um, yeah, we pretty much spent all day in Tennessee. Sunday we woke up. Um, now I saved the bell cause my trainer was under the impression that, you know, the load didn't have to get picked up until Monday. I'm like, no, bro, it says it right there. 12-4 at 1.30. And he was adamant, no, no, they don't pick up on weekends. They don't pick up on weekends. 
So me being new, I'm like, well, he the trainer. He must know what he's talking about. But I'm like, no, bro. I know I, I'm looking right at it. It says 1.30. So long story short, I brought it to his attention one more time and kind of found out I saved the day. So um, we wound up shooting down to Louisiana from Alabama, which isn't a long trip. Um, Louisiana is beautiful, by the way. Um, if you've never been there, or shout out to all y'all that's from Louisiana. Louisiana is beautiful, bro. Like I definitely look forward to um, going to Louisiana, at least for a vacation, New Orleans. Um, we rode through Baton Rouge. Like I love, yeah, Louisiana. That's where it's at. And it was like 75 degrees, so y'all know I was loving that. So um, that's one of the pluses about, you know, trucking. It will take you out of your uh, your comfort zone, and um, you will see a lot of spots that you never you know, plan to or thought you would see. So, you know, Louisiana was never really on my bucket list to see or go to. But, I mean, when I went there, I was shocked, right? It was like, you know, they got a lot of high bridges. So if you were scared of heights, uh, yeah, power to you because they do have a lot of high bridges. But, um, yeah, we picked up the little Louisiana. Um, so we got loaded. So that was a little fun. That was a little highlight. Um, put my mood up a little bit. Just seeing Louisiana being in that warm weather. Um, so, yeah, that was cool. We picked up Louisiana. And um, we made it all the way from Louisiana all the way up to here to Illinois in one shot. I drove a lot. I think it was like a total of 800 miles. I want to say like 600, 700 miles, somewhere around there. So I drove a chunk of it. And then my trainer, he took over and he drove a chunk of it. And um, we made it up here. Hence, which brings me to this point right here where I'm making this video. And I know I kind of shifted from people hawk spitting in the toilet and in the sink and brushing your teeth but this goes along with some of the things you will face when you're out here over the road being new and this is like i said a pet peeve of mine these long wait times are killing me and it's everybody's different but as far as training it's killing me for the training because we got up here nine o'clock this morning now mind you i told you i drove the first half coming out of louisiana my training he drove the rest of the way so once again, I find myself in a situation where I was sleep the whole time and I was genuinely tired. So it's not like, you know, all right, well, you should have just stayed up until you got there. No, I was genuinely tired. I tried to stay up to the point where I didn't even realize that I dozed off. So next thing I know, I wake up to my truck shaking. We in a bumpy road and the truck slowing down. I'm gonna let this truck pass. Yeah, so I wake up to the truck bouncing up and down slowing down almost fell <laughs> and i realized all right we must be here um we're pulling up i look at my clock it's 9 15 so sure enough they said yeah you're not supposed to get loaded till 6 30 so i need you to pull over there until your appointment time it's 9 30 brother 9 30 i'm just waking up i'm fresh faced right now i'm like yo what am i supposed to do until 9 30 there's nothing around <sighs> So I call a few people, you know, um, that kind of passes time. Um, of course, I had to make some content for y'all, so that's always fun. Um, so that helped pass the time. Um, and after I shoot this, I'm gonna probably edit it for y'all, put this up for y'all so y'all can enjoy it. But, um, bro, these wait times, man, these wait times. That's, if you like me, that's what's gonna kill you. And I'm not complaining, but like I said, these videos are for y'all, but they're also for me to look back on. And yeah, these wait times, bro these wait times are a killer so um yeah man leave in the comments i guess if anybody that's watching this that went through tnt what did y'all do to pass the time or how did y'all deal with the long wait times or is it even supposed to be like this is it just maybe my fleet manager as to why we keep getting these long wait times because coming into this training i always thought it was all right that first couple days i understood why we weren't constantly moving because he was new well, I was, he was new to me, I was new to him, so he didn't trust my driving. But now we're at the point where I know you trust my driving because while I'm driving, you be in the back either sleep or you busting up on the phone. So I know you're not really worried about my driving. And I always thought coming into Prime, it was a situation where y'all always would be moving because it's a team truck. So while I'm driving, he will be sleep, and then vice versa. When he sleep, I'll be driving and we will always be moving. I wasn't aware that there was gonna be this much downtime. And this is not the first time it seems like every two days we have significant just downtime where we just sitting a day and a half. Two grown men on one truck. So leaving the comments, that's supposed to be like that. Um, I did hear like Reefer, those guys, they pretty much just run, sleep, run, sleep, run, sleep. That's a good, I like that. That's a good situation for me. 
because I'm not the type of person that could just do well with just, you know what I mean, sitting around wasting time, just being bored. And right now I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time. Um, but nonetheless, I'm gonna get out of my feelings, out of my rent. And I'm gonna just say this, I will try to find some productive, well, some ways to be productive during my downtime. So yes, I've been reading, um, making content, just reflecting on where I want my trucking career to go. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's completely a waste of time to be sitting out here, but it will eat at you. It makes the time kind of go slow. When you, um, you know, you got 30,000 miles or 35,000 miles per tanker um, in your brain and that you're trying to knock out the way and you're constantly just sitting, not getting any miles. So, um, but yeah, that's just some of the things you got to look forward to. Um, and please, if this is a discouraging video for some of y'all, I apologize, but y'all got to remember, this is my vlog, this is my experience, this is my journey. Um, so I'm documenting all my feelings, um, you know, so it's not meant to discourage nobody. I'm just giving y'all the raw truth. Um, like I said, if y'all really want it, how I want it, all the stuff I'm saying is not going to deter y'all anyway, because it damn sure ain't going to deter me. You know, I'm just a little annoyed, <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Um, I don't want to make it too long, drag it out, now I'm just rambling. So I will get with y'all in the next video. Like I said, we are dropping this load off at 6.30. Um, I did see another load come through and it looks like we're staying in Illinois. I can't stay in Illinois. I cannot wait to get out of Illinois. But uh, we got a loving old picking up from Illinois and we're dropping that off. I don't know exactly where the pickup is, but I know it's in Illinois and we're dropping it off in Chicago, Illinois. So I guess I'll see y'all when I get to Chicago. Um, we'll have more things to wrap about. Y'all be safe, keep trucking, and I will get with y'all.